Hello everyone, this is Cheyenne from EC Design Studio. This is my first YouTube video ever. Well, it's my first video ever, whether YouTube or not. Um, it's a little exciting. I'm sure there's going to be a learning curve, but we'll get through this together. Today I'm going to show you how to make this card. I love Disney. I bleed pixie dust. It's a part of who I am. I apologize for any noise that you might hear. I live next to a kind of busy road. I've got all the windows and doors open because it is beautiful outside. Alright, let's get started with the basics for the card. Alright, your card base. It's going to be a standard A2 size card. It measures five and a half by eight and a half. Basically you take an eight and a half by eleven piece of cardstock and you cut it in half. You score it at four and a quarter and that's going to give you your card base. Then you need a piece of light colored, I'm using white, cardstock. This is going to go on the inside of the card and this is where you're going to write your sentiment because it's a lot easier to write on the white than it is to the black cardstock of the base. This is measured at four by five and a quarter. And then we have a piece of watercolor paper. Now whenever I'm working with watercolor paper or something that I'm going to do more of a full background on, I always cut it a little bit bigger and then when it's all done I'll cut it down to the right size. So right now this is four and a quarter by five and a half and when it's all done we'll cut it down to four by five and a quarter. I also have two Mickey head die cuts. If you have a punch you can use that. I use my Cricut and I cut these out at one and three quarters. I bleed pixie dust. I gotta have a little Mickey in everything I do. So I cut out a whole bunch of these at one time. I cut them out in black and white. The white ones I can, you know, color whatever. It's a great time. Okay, let's work on the Mickey heads first. I've got a couple of these flourish stamps. Any flourish stamps you have will do. Mine have been well loved. As you can see, they're very stained. My block has been well loved as well. I am a Stamping Up demonstrator now and I will be replacing these with Stamping Up products because it's time. Alright, so what you're going to want to do for these Mickey heads with the little flourishes, you're going to take your stamps, you're going to ink it up with a Versamark ink pad. Versamark is great for embossing. It also leaves a wonderful watermark. You can also use it with Perfect Pearls to get a nice shimmery effect. You just want to give these a good stamp, position them up nice, pop it off carefully. And the stamping, it's pretty self-explanatory. It's fun. It's satisfying. Everyone should try it at least once in their lives. Alright, so we got both of these stamped up. I always have a baby wipe near me, so I just set them down, the stamps on the baby wipe so that everything kind of stays moist and nothing dries too much. Alright, since we have Versamark on my silicone mat, I'm going to wipe that up real quick, bring these back because Versamark will stay a little moist for a while, moist and sticky. So we've got our Perfect Pearls and the brush. If you buy it in one of the kits with the four, four Perfect Pearls, it comes with two brushes. So you just tap it in, you tap it onto your, uh, your Mickey heads and then you're going to swirl around. This is going to make sure that the Perfect Pearls only stays where we stamped. And then, just like that, we have some fancy, shimmery, shiny, flourishy Mickey heads to go on our card. You could also just cut these out of a fancy paper that you like and skip this step. But I like to do as much handmade stuff as I can on my cards because I think that's what makes the card special. That's how you get the heart. All right, next, let's work on our watercolor paper. So I have this nice little Winsor & Newton watercolor set. It's a nice travel set. It does come with a little teeny tiny travel brush. I have no idea what I'm going to do with this little travel brush, but I guess it's nice to have in there. 
Like these are really nice. They're a nice quality, but they're at affordable rate. I got mine at Michael's. Uh, you can pick them up at various retailers online. I always just spritz it down with some water to get my watercolors activated. We're going to lightly mist our background. This is going to help everything to kind of disperse out. I also have um, water brushes. You can use these. You can use um, your traditional, you know, big paint brushes. Where are my paint brushes and water? Whatever you're comfortable with. All right. So what you're just gonna do? You're just gonna start dropping color down. What's great about the water brushes is you can really control how much water gets put on. You're going to want to have a paper towel next to you so that you can switch out colors easily. I don't worry too much about my products getting contaminated, my watercolors, because that's kind of just how you season a watercolor palette. It's all right. It's all good. It's only watercolor. Don't think too hard about it. This is supposed to be fun, supposed to be easy. Oh, all right, and the watercolor paper I'm using, by the way, is just a cheaper one that I got, so you'll notice that it's going to buckle up a little bit more than some of your more professional watercolor papers. Once I lay some colors down, I'm just going to give it an extra spritz, add some water, and then what's great is you can then just kind of like move it around, get different patterns going, keep it soft. All right. And watercolors can be messy, but it's watercolors, so it's all right. You see where this has a whole lot of watercolor? I'm just going to soak that up a little bit because that's just going to end up getting things really muddy. And nobody likes a muddy card and muddy watercolors. You can then set this aside and just let it dry on its own or you can use a heat tool. Probably turn that on a little early because you couldn't hear me. Um, use a heat tool to heat set it and dry it really quick and you can move on with your life. So I'm going to go ahead and dry this up and then we'll be back. Watercolor papers all dry. We've got our first coat. Watercolors are always more vibrant and more intense, more full bodied when you layer them. So we're actually going to mist this down again just a little bit and we're going to start dropping in colors. So what I want to do is I want to get a really kind of diluted mix of my watercolor and I'm just going to use the water pen to drop it down. You can do this uh, with a regular paintbrush and water. Using the water brush just makes it a lot easier, quicker. You have a little bit more control over what you're doing. So once we get those water droplets on, we are going to spray this all down again and we're again going to move it around a little bit and that's just going to give a nice soft random pattern to it. The colors you use by the way are completely up to you. Whatever your favorites are, whatever your loved ones favorites are, whoever you're giving the card to, and isn't it always nice to personalize things that way? What's also fun about watercolor is you can use a paper towel, just kind of almost pick up some of the color, erase it a little bit. All right, I'm going to dry this up and then I'll be right back and we'll continue with the card. 